Oh. Somebody. Oh. He needs oh. some milk. Calcium gluconate, why do we really give it? The most common reason is to stabilize the myocardium during profound hyperkalemia, but does it fix the high potassium? Well, not really, but if we stabilize the myocardium with calcium first, we can then try and drive the potassium back into the cell with several other medications. So we'll use insulin, sodium bicarb, dextrose, and even albuterol. So why not just give calcium chloride? Calcium chloride has a higher level of tissue necrosis if not given through a central line. That being said, if you have that medication on your rig, give it if it's within your protocol. The other common reasons to give calcium in any form are for hypocalcemia, a lack of calcium. In this case, we are gonna give the calcium for symptoms. We're not chasing calcium levels. Low calcium in conjunction with some or several of the following, which include circumoral paresthesias, muscle cramps, Cramps, myalgias, dysphagia, depression, confusion, irritability, seizures, tetany, laryngospasm, hypotension, hyperreflexia, trousseau sign, and Shostek sign. On EKG, hypocalcemia presents with prolonged QT waves. So we'll use it for hypermagnesemia. Calcium is a direct agonist to magnesium and can shift the magnesium to stabilize the levels. We'll see this mostly in pregnancy cases. We use it for overdose or beta blockers, for calcium channel blocker overdoses. Calcium is thought to counteract the effects of these drugs on the heart and results in some inotropy, helping to restore the cardiac function. We'll use it for blood transfusions as well. Calcium is often part of a mass transfusion protocols because the citrate that's added to the blood products binds to the patient's calcium and depletes it, which can cause hypocalcemia. So it would need to be replaced with the calcium. Don't give calcium with ceftriaxone. They cannot be mixed in the same line. 